Okay then. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ian Milne from Diodes. I will be presenting this afternoon our 15 minutes with diodes, focusing on our DC to DC products. So, here is just an overview of uh, the agenda and the up and coming events we have here. So, as I mentioned, today is on the DC, DC to DC bucks. Folk P63 family. In the next three months, we will have the following. In November, it will be our Piso Sound Driver application. And then in December, it will be our focus on TBS, particularly on our quad flow through parts. And then new topic for January now is our timing design considerations. Okay then. Just to sort of summarize out from last month specifically here. So we actually had a winner of that month. That topic was about the P channels specifically for reverse battery protection. And last month our winner was Daniel Klein here, uh, focused around a DMP 60 volt in a power die 333 package with an overall opportunity there that was more than a million pieces per year. So they will be put forward for our overall um, prize draw at the end of at the end of the 12 months on this. Okay. So for this week now, you can let us know about your current projects that will be focused around DC to DCs, and that, and just drop them in to our to your local diodes representative. Just let us know on those. Thank you. So. Today's sweet spot and application area that we're going to be going on is the DC to DC bucks. These are the synchronous step down, uh, focused on the AP63 family, which are the 32 volt input versions. And the reason around this is because these provide an efficient power conversion from 24 volts down to 12 volt input rails and, and to lower output rails in that as well. Uh, the diode sweet spot particularly for these is the fact that ours are fully synchronous for enhanced efficiency. They also have 32 volt inputs to withstand those spikes on the 24 volt or 12 volt input rails. They also have lower EMI signature and they will support a single layer layout on the PCB to help with that layout. So, the main applications on this is power management in 24 volts or 12 volt industrial systems, very appropriate for the European market. And this is really stepping us out from the range that we used to have before, which was really focused around the 5 volt DC to DC and that, and now we're stepping up with the 32 volts and 40 volts. But today's focus is on the 32 volt series. Okay, so if we was just to look at a power tree around this, if we was to then take in, let's say from an AC to DC, which gave you a 24 volt output, or may, maybe it might be a 12 volt output. And then obviously you want to go off and power up your main systems here. Whether that's a system on a chip or just a simple MCU. And then you may have different core voltages and memory voltages to give out. And then obviously around this you might have some cons with Ethernet or I2C or USB or various RFs like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi or CPB. So you need to power all of these. And then alongside those you might also have some sensors, indicators, user interfaces or even some LEDs to drive. All of this will need power management. And here's an example of the power tree. Yeah. So let's look at this to start with. Stepping down on this would be the synchronous DC to DC. And you'll be looking at here the AP63 family to offer this. I've shown a couple of examples here with the 356 offerings here to step down to output to 1.8 volts. And then maybe a 3.3 volt or a 5 volt as well. And then maybe you might need to step down further from those rails itself. 
and to provide a timing between them all, which can all, all be done using the fact that these have enables and power good signaling on them. So you can do timing between them all, synchronize them. Okay. And then on top of that, you might also need from diodes ink as well some load, load switches that specifically turn on and off particular areas that would come in with the same voltages, going out to the same voltages. But you might need to turn on and off other features. Maybe that's the core voltage rail or something else on there as well. Or coming out with a USB switch. Okay. And then likewise, maybe you might need very low PSRR, or let's say very high PSRR, in terms of trying to reduce down the noise. And you might want to have an LVO instead of using you know, DC to DC to power up the Ziggy B interface on there. So please take a look at our LVO go with those as well. Okay. And then what we're going to focus on today, this is obviously an example of the power management. Today's example here, we're going to just focus on the synchronous to DC to DC bucks and what we can offer on this point here. So what is it that I'm actually talking about? I'm talking about here DC to DC buck step down converters. So here, the whole X family is synchronous box itself. So you can take a rail input voltage that might be 24 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, or anything in between those. We could even accept higher with our 40 volt range as well. And then these actually offer a synchronous step down converter solution here with then outputs of say 12 volts or 5 volts or 3.3 or different core voltages as well. So these are our complete DC to DC converter solution that come in a synchronous switching for higher efficiency, for higher efficiencies and reduced total bomb cost because you don't need that external shock key that you would need with an asynchronous solution because internally you've got a low side MOSFET as well as obviously the high side. So externally, you just need the inductors, the caps, and then you would need the resistor train to provide the feedback of the voltage outputs as well. Okay, then. so then just to focus in then on the 32 volt series itself. So these have been optimized for 24 volt and 12 volt input rails with an overall low EMI signature on these. So they then give you an output going as low as 0.8 volts all the way up to V in itself because they actually have an LVO function. Uh, output currents, you can choose variants from 1 amp to 3.5 amp output versions that we do up to. And the key features around these is in terms of 32 volts withstand capability. They even actually have up to 40 volts for just a short term spike down in the millisecond range. But they can withstand then very suitable for 24 volt, 12 volt rails and other variants around this as well. These also, as I mentioned before, are synchronous replication. So you can improve that efficiency as well as save board space and cost overall because you don't need that external shock key diode so you can get rid of that um, as well as it's more efficient than actually having that diode there as well. The overall cost can come down the layer there. As well as having LVO mode on these parts as well so that means that you can regulate as the input voltage drops down let's say for example you've got an output of 12 volts you might have an industrial rail input that could be varying from 24 volts down to 12 volts, but you still want to keep a stabilised output around the 12 volts or so. So these products allow you to do that as well. On top of that, they also have spread spectrum to reduce down the EMI signature. Very many parts. And they will support single layer the ease of the layouts that you can actually do on the PCB itself. Okay, then we come in a couple of versions. Either you might want to 
actually have a better light load efficiency, so you might want to choose the PFM version. That then means that the switching frequency is actually varied on these three parts, and you can increase the light load efficiency of those. Or you might want to have the PWM version, which then has a fixed frequency that allows you to reduce the overall interference signature that you might get out from these parts. Okay, just to then give you an overview of the actual family itself, here, here is the complete family on the 32 volt series. And if I just then break this down, you've got the SOP26 package and then you've also got a DFM package version, which actually comes in the higher current output versions on the DFM version. There's more feature that you can actually get from the DFM version, so they're really good for that. So they can all support the LDO mode, which enables a stabilized V out as V in actually falls. They can also come with different switching frequencies, and some of them obviously with the PFM version will actually vary the switching frequency itself. But as you can see here, you can get up to 1.1 megahertz, or maybe you just only want 450 kilohertz version to actually get the switching frequency below the medium wave band and reduce down the interference output from this. Then another offering into these parts is the spread fraction switching frequency for better EMI. As well as you could have on some of these parts as well a power good signal. So that's in terms of lets you know when the output voltage rail has risen up within a certain percentage of what you need on the output to let the system know that you've got the output voltage rail risen before you enable another part of the system on. So that overall improves the system robustness to give you that switching times between them. As I mentioned before, the PWM, uh, sorry, the PFM mode itself, you can vary the switching frequency as the load decreases for higher efficiency at light loads. And then you've also got external compensation to improve the dynamic performance of the parts as well. Okay, so what can we offer to you to actually help with the designing process on such parts like this? We've got extensive range of evaluation boards across the whole series here. And there's user guides on our website. There's a link there available to find the actual user guides itself. And then around that, we've also got a team that can help you with the designing process of these, these parts. They're generally very easy to work, work with these parts. They've been optimized around that as well. So just ending out then on some of these, the, the next little stage I'd really see is a call to action here is if you've got any DC opportunities out there that you are working with at the moment, please let us know. Either contact through your local distributor or direct contact to the local sales uh, manager in your territory in that. And then you can be put forward for the draws at the end of the year. And if you've got any questions in that, Please contact us via the 15 minutes at eu.diodes.com email address or use your local diodes representative as well. I, here's a list of the responsible engineers for your particular area. You can contact any of those with technical questions and that around these. And then these links out on the left hand side focus on the particular DC to DC areas and then around that the evaluation boards and if you've got any further questions. Okay. And thanks for your time this afternoon. That's all folks.